welcome. You have connected to Citizens Climate Lobby Climate Advocate Training. Today's slides are in the address on the screen with a more in-depth training. My name is Solem Hernandez and I'll be one of your hosts today. Thank you for joining us. And before we get started, we want to acknowledge that you are taking time away from your family, your friends, or your hobbies to listen to this lesson and to work on something that is so much larger than ourselves. For that, we're extremely grateful. We have a team of three presenters today. My name is Solemi Hernandez, and I have the honor to be Citizens Climate Lobby Southeast Regional Coordinator. I am based in Naples, Florida, and I support volunteers organizing to build political will in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Lisa? Hi, I'm one of the Florida State Coordinators, and I live on the Space Coast. We're focused here on the effects of climate change on the Indian River Lagoon. Jeff? Hi, I'm one of the Orlando chapter leaders. The methods in this training have worked for me and thousands of others to leverage our power as citizens to impact our elected leaders. Take my word for it. Thank you, Jeff. Our time together will cover CCL organization, a structure, our values, how citizens create political will and the tool we use to create that political will, our methodology, a brief overview of a lobby meeting. Uh, we talk a little bit about the Energy Innovation Act, a carbon fee and dividend bill in Congress right now. And we're gonna do a quick uh, reconciliation update. All right, let's get started. We often talk about the CCL way of doing things, but what are citizens' climate lobby values? A citizens' climate lobby is growing so quickly, it is key that all of our thousands of supporters are on the same page. Our values are something we use to guide our decisions. How we respond to others, like a home base we know we can return to. CCL recognizes seven core values that are essential to our identity and it runs in our DNA. Those are integrity, focus, optimism, relationships, personal power, being nonpartisan and diversity. So let's explore each of them briefly with this video. Citizens Climate Lobby is a nonprofit, nonpartisan, grassroots advocacy organization focused on national policies to address climate change. These core values guide our staff and volunteers along the way. Focus. Our focus is on one of the single most impactful solutions to climate change, placing a steadily rising fee on carbon dioxide emissions and rebating that money back to all American households. We know it won't solve the problem entirely, and we appreciate the work that our friends and other groups are also doing. Optimism. We believe that people are good and that democracy works. We are confident that our approach will work because we see progress. We stand for a solution, knowing process of other solutions. Together, we are a community that offers one another comfort, support, and fun as we work. Relationships. We take the most generous approach to other people as possible. That grounded in appreciation, gratitude, and respect. We listen, we work to find common values, and we endeavor to understand our own biases. We know that there's a place for protest, but our approach is in building consensus. Integrity. We are prepared and do our research. We are always on time for meetings. Our approach is thoughtful and fertile. We consult with experts and use data. We are open to new information. In fact, we solicit opposing opinions. Personal power. We use our voices to be heard. This simple act transforms us from spectators to engaged citizens, and it reveals the true nature of democracy to us. 
We are volunteer driven, trusting volunteers to make important decisions and to create and develop things that will be valued by Citizens Climate Lobby. Diversity. We empower everyone in exercising their personal and political power, regardless of race, ethnicity, nationality, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, religion, ability, socioeconomic factors, or political affiliation. We seek out support and elevate people whose voices may not have been fully heard. Being nonpartisan. We are open to all who are serious about solving climate change. We don't judge each other on where we live, what we wear, what we do for a living, or who we voted for in the last election. We work with elected officials and community leaders from across the political spectrum. We believe everyone is a potential ally. It's your corner too. Jump in. Sign up to get started on volunteering with CCL and get connected with the group nearest you. Citizens Climate Lobby is a volunteer-driven organization organized locally by chapters. A group or chapter is a local team that's creating political will and clear evidence that citizens support action on climate change within a congressional district or within a state. Citizens Climate Lobby has hundreds of groups across North America, from cities like New York, Los Angeles, and Toronto to Pocatello, Idaho, and Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We also have chapters across Europe, Australia, Africa, Asia, and Central America. Each chapter has a group leader or a couple of co-leaders who help organize and coordinate the local activities of the group. Groups may be in varying stages of development. One group may have one person who's just getting the group started, and another one may be more established and have dozens of members. In the U.S., each group belongs in one of 11 different regions featured here on the map. Each region has a regional coordinator who supports the group leaders and state coordinators in each of these geographic areas. Jeff? Now that we've discussed our groups, group leaders, and structure, let's take a look at what liaisons do. A CCL liaison is someone who is the representative for CCL when the group contacts a congressional staffer. There are 535 members of Congress. CCL's goal is to have a liaison for each of those offices and their staff. The liaisons build ongoing relationships with their members of Congress and their staff by maintaining regular personal contact and by coordinating the group's meetings and communicating with that office. This can be anything from sending a card when your member experiences a significant event, updating the office with timely resources related to climate change, or even inviting the staff to a local barbecue. We're working on a complex issue, climate change. So having one consistent point of contact with the office of each member of Congress makes our purpose of communicating about climate change and our solutions much more effective. Here's an important point of clarification. Even though we have liaisons, each CCL volunteer is encouraged to personally write and call their member of Congress and to do so frequently. <clears throat> Here's one last important point in our relationship with members of Congress offices and the confidentiality we expect from our volunteers. It's essential that we don't repeat outside or share by notes or emails what we hear in our meetings. We leave it to the member of Congress, even if they're vocally enthusiastic to make their own public statements about climate. Bottom line, whether it's a seemingly casual question about policy details or any other private comments, it's critical to train ourselves to respect what is said in confidence. When we consistently demonstrate we can be trusted in this way, it then opens the door for deeper conversations that can move the member forward. To build those relationships of trust, let's explore the CCL concept of looking for common ground. 
because finding common ground is the key to any long-term relationship. And long-term relationships are what CCL is all about. Building a long-term relationship with members of Congress and their staff are critical for our success. Here's the good news. We absolutely believe that we can find common ground with anyone. And when we look for finding common ground, we start in three places. We look for shared values, we look for social connections, and we look at places we care about and love. Regarding shared values, it can start on the most simple level. If you have kids, consider that most members of Congress have kids and are concerned for their future as well. So during meeting introductions, mention your kids or grandkids or nephews. Other examples of shared values include one's religion belief, general outlook, like a safe and prosperous future, energy independence, and freedom of choice. It's always productive to find out where you overlap with common values. And when you and your member of Congress or their stats find them, like for example, you share the same college or the same religion, make sure to keep emphasizing the connection in your interactions. On social connections, we learn about the people we meet in advance. For members of Congress, we find out about their former jobs, schools, clubs, and interests. You can do the same with AIDS, although it's a little bit more difficult to find information about them. However, you can use LinkedIn and look at their profile there. Another way to find out information about the people we're meeting with is just asking the aide or staffer to tell you a little bit about themselves. This is not just being polite. There are things that we really want to know. If there is a hometown or a college connection with someone on our lobby team, we are going to make that connection. That's how you build a long-term relationship. It relaxes the people we meet with and it gets them talking about themselves instead of lecturing them. Lastly, common ground can also be literally a patch of ground on this earth, a place we love, or the member of Congress or the staffers love. We have found that no matter who we talk to, people love their home community and the larger world passionately. So in a little bit, we'll jump into an exercise to get us thinking about using our own story and stories and experiences as a basis for building common ground. This is the value of appreciation. We often use a statement of appreciation to begin meetings, letters to the editor and others. It's not just a kickoff device. We work to keep appreciation in our mind throughout our interactions. This is important because some people will have a predisposed view of us like we do of them. So asking ourselves to appreciate them not only changes their view of us, but also takes the chip off of our soldier shoulder about who we think they are. It helps us to remove our own biases and to see them as someone we wanna work with versus seeing them as an obstacle. This approach puts us in a generous place that allows us to seek understanding and common ground. So this is our one rule. Treat everyone, even those who disagree with us, with respect, appreciation, and gratitude. We meet them where they are rather than where they want, where we want them to be. At Citizens Climate Lobby, we focus on what we want. We want to solve the climate crisis. We want a livable planet. In this exercise, we get down on the ground, exploring what you want to preserve. To set this all up, here is a quote, E.B. White, author of the Charlotte Webs and Elements of Style, gave in an interview with the New York Times in 1969. Every morning, I wake up turned between a desire to save the world and an inclination to savor it. This makes it hard to plan the day. We in CCL, my ad, 
But if we forget to savor the word, what possible reason do we have for saving it? In a way, the savoring must come first. Let me repeat the last part. If we forget to savor the word, what possible reason do we have for saving it? Even though there may be some different opinions with who we talk to about what's causing the climate to change or just how much humans are responsible for, we can all agree that there is something special on this earth that we want to be around for future generations. Having something we savor on this earth is the common ground we all share. This exercise is a way to begin developing your climate story that you can share, share with others. Identify a, a specific place that you love that is being threatened to be negatively impacted by climate change. We're not talking about a genetic type of place like the beach, nor we mean to focus on a place that is being threatened by other environmental factors like overdevelopment or toxic pollutions. Let's specifically key into how climate change is and will impact the places we care for. If it's in your hometown and your congressional district, all the better to help establish that common ground. The reason we ask this is that social science research have shown people connect much more strongly with their own backyard and concern for their community than far off impact. So think about what your place looks like on your mind eye. Try to paint a descriptive picture for us to help us really understand what you savor about it. If possible, tie it in the potential impact on local economy that your community faces as well. It could be reduced workforce or agricultural productivity, extreme heat, droughts, wildfires, inland flooding, the sea vector expansion, seafood yields. There are so many ways to make sure your story, your personal story connects with the common concerns like the natural world and economic well-being. Stories are very powerful means of connecting with people and the more prepared we are to share our own and make a personal connection, the more likely we are to find that common ground. Stories are also a way for us to humanize climate change and help those around us deepen their concern for caring and preserving these places for future generations. Let's consider, let's consider what we love about life, maybe family traditions or a special spot in nature, perhaps art, music, poetry, a certain way of life. And let me share my personal story and something I, I love about this very special place to me. I live in Naples, Florida, very close to the Florida Everglades. And I love the natural spaces there, the biodiversity, the smell of seawater mixing with the fresh growing flowers along this, the streamways. I love alligators and the birds that live there, like this beautiful spoonbill. The Everglades ecosystem overall cleans our waters, removing nutrient pollution and recharge our Florida, our aquifer, which is our source of drinking water. Here's the sad part. Everything in the, in the Everglades is being threatened by climate change. There is salt water intrusion in the aquifer because sea level rising, jeopardizing our drinking water. Extreme weather is impacting the peak bug roots so they aren't growing as strong as they used to and they're not removing, they're not removing as much nutrient pollution. Um, we are losing our biodiversity. Less, there's less than 200 Florida panthers on the wild. All of these impact Florida tourism and economy that depends of our environment, which means less jobs on top of all the natural world impact. Many people are familiar with our vision to create a political will for a livable world. We know that politicians don't create political will, they respond to it. 
and that it is our job as constituents to create so much political will that politicians have no other choice than to do what we ask of them. Citizens Climate Lobby teaches constituents how to empower themselves, how to develop relationships with their representatives so that we can help Congress see there's political will for powerful climate solutions. We endeavor to show that people, that your voice will make a difference. If we say our vision is to create political will, then we should clarify more precisely what we mean. Think of building political will as actions our chapters strategically take to demonstrate to Congress that the will of the people is to have a sustainable climate. So what does this look like? Political will is really just the clear demonstration of support back home. Legislators need to know a specific actionable step, not simply that we want a sustainable climate and a strong economy. They want to hear what policies, policies we want enacted so they can act on the people's will. That's precisely what we'll get into in just a moment, but first a bit more on why we use the methodology we do. We organize people by congressional districts, which we found to be the most efficient way to meet with and demonstrate political will to Congress. And through over a decade of organizing, we've learned from many others about what creates political will and what does not. Here's why that's important. We know as volunteers, you're giving us something so very precious, your time. And we know that you don't have an infinite supply of it, so we only ask CCL volunteers to do things that we know will have a very good chance of demonstrating the will of the people. We take actions that we know will be successful in having members of Congress move in the direction of our legislation. So what creates political will? We've organized our actions into five levers, and we call them the levers of political will. One is lobbying, two is media relations, three is grassroots outreach, four grass tops outreach, and five chapter development. We'll review each of these in depth next, as Archimedes was reported to say saying, if you give me a lever, I can move the world. Jeff? First, there's lobbying. Nothing is more impactful than constituents meeting frequently with their members of Congress or their staff. So we meet with them often in order to build a relationship of trust and show them climate legislation their constituents want and educate them on how our proposal will impact their state or district. In between meetings, like we talked about earlier, a special CCL volunteer called a liaison checks in frequently with their con congressional office. The activities in the other levers demonstrate interests, concern, and desires from the district or state. But leveraging lobbying is the most highly leveraged activity that we can do. The second lever of political will is media. We work with both print and digital media in order to drive the conversation towards powerful climate solutions like a cash back carbon fee. Media teams work with local media, newspapers, TV, radio, and social media. Um, they write letters to the editor and we engage newspapers to ask for endorsements for uh, things that we're lobbying for. When we get endorsements, we know they've got our back and they support our bill. Our grassroots effort get give, help give the voice to those who care about climate. A, start, a, a 2019 study from the Yelp program on climate change communication said that two thirds of Americans, 66%, are at least someone concerned about climate change. We want to bring those voices to Congress. When CCL volunteers set up tables at festivals and events, we get a chance to talk to others about climate change and encourage them to write to their members of Congress right there at the table. Some will sign up to be on CCL emailing list, which could lead them to join a local chapter. Some of you may have found us at a table event, for example. We also recruit people to call the members of Congress on a monthly basis. And we call this our Monday calling, camp our Monday calling campaign. 
Members of Congress consistently tell us that we need to, that they need to hear from local respected leaders. Our members of Congress trust these people and turn to them for advice. So that's why we seek their support to encourage our members of Congress to act on climate and, and endure the policies that we are supporting. Finally, the last lever is developing your chapter at the grassroots level. Growing both in numbers and skills is what allows us to lobby more effectively, to generate more media, and to do outreach. Some ways you could contribute include helping to organize the monthly meetings, helping with chapter communications like phone calls, emails, and social media, also inviting new people to meetings or mentoring new members is always a huge contribution. Think of our five levers as a menu. Determine what you'd like to contribute, which brings us to the question of which one of these levers is most attractive to you. As we look more deeply at the activities, listen to your inner guidance, notice which lever appeals to you and which activities related to that lever attract you. It's perfectly fine if you can't connect to them all or if you can't connect with any, but if that's the case, you can simply ask the group leader how you can best assist them. Another thing about organizing in five levers, if one is stuck, we can actually pull harder on some of the other levers. For example, you've met with your member of Congress several times and they agree that carbon fee and dividend policy is the best proposal. However, they will not support this policy until there's support from primary voters or businesses in the district. So it makes sense to ramp up outreach to businesses and community le leaders in your area and also to grow your group to broaden your local vocal base of support. What we're trying to do together is not going to be easy, but citizens who are passionate, well-trained, organized by congressional district and who have a good system of support can more than influence the political process. We're committed to building ongoing positive relationships within our community and with members of Congress in order to create the political space that allows these members of Congress to move in the direction we want. So when we talk about building a relationship, why is that important? Here in Florida, CCL volunteers were able to build relationships with Representative Rooney and Representative Corbello and discuss with them the bipartisan benefits of a carbon fee and dividend policy. Representative Rooney was one of the original three co-sponsors of the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. Corbello later became a co-sponsor of the bill in Congress. This is this video shows the power of our volunteers. Share one quick story to illustrate the power of our volunteers. Piper Christian. After attending the CCL conference as a high school freshman, she founded a climate club at her school. She and her classmates audaciously decided to pass a pro-climate resolution through the Utah State Legislature. They found a Republican to introduce the resolution, but it wasn't granted a hearing. So. Not to be deterred, Piper and friends organized a youth-led mock hearing where 100 students from across the state testified. But the resolution still didn't pass that year. So Piper, along with CCL's statewide network, leapt into action. Over the next year, constituents lobbied and called every single state legislator. They also organized a youth lobby day. They got the resolution endorsed by 12 major Utah businesses. They led the Utah Earth Day Parade, and they got their stories in the papers. These efforts paid off. The resolution actually passed in 2019, but it didn't stop there. The resolution inspired 18 Utah cities to pledge going carbon neutral. The state passed five more climate bills and created a climate roadmap in 2020. And these relationships just led a group of 25 re prominent Republicans in the state to publish an op-ed in the Deseret News calling for a price on carbon. Also, prominent Utah members of Congress, such as Senator Mitt Romney and Representative John Curtis, have begun advocating for national climate solutions as well. Representative Curtis went so far as to found the Conservative Climate Caucus in the House, which now has 60 Republican members. These are the kind of relationships that CCL volunteers are building with their communities and their members of Congress. And I'm happy to share that Piper now serves on the CCL Board of Directors. 
This is just what is at the heart of CCL's methodology. People told us there was no way we could get Republicans to sponsor a resolution in Congress that said that climate change is real, significantly influenced by humans, and that Congress should do something about it. We chose to see that possibility and worked with Representative Gibson to introduce the Republican climate resolution in 2015. Then people told us there was no way we'd get Republicans and Democrats to sit down together, much less form and join a caucus with the word climate in its title. We chose to see that possibility and worked with Florida representatives Deutsch and Corbello to create the Climate Solutions Caucus, which at the end of 2018 had 90 members, 45 Republicans and 45 Democrats working together to talk solutions and address one of the most pressing issues of our time. And then people told us it was impossible to believe that Republicans and Democrats would be willing to co-sponsor a <clears throat> significant carbon pricing legislation together as it hadn't happened in over a decade. We chose to see that possibility again. And today the monumental Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act is a direct result of more than a decade of CCL volunteers work with all members of Congress. Here's what President Biden said last year, and Congress has followed through. CCL continues to lobby for other policies to reach the Paris Climate Agreement goal of a 50% reduction of greenhouse gases by 2030. Lisa? In order to achieve this goal, CCL has advocated for over a decade for a strong climate solution called carbon fee and dividend. A strong carbon fee and dividend style policy can be thought of as having three important elements, so we'll explore each of those briefly. The carbon fee, which puts a fee on fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, it starts low and grows over time. This will drive down carbon pollution because energy companies, leading industries, and American consumers will move towards cleaner, cheaper options. We suggested a fee that starts at $15 a ton of CO2 and increases by $10 a ton each year on top of inflation. The carbon dividend is the second leg of the stool that sees to it that 100% of the net revenue collected from this fee gets allocated equally to households. That's the cash back part. The money collected from the fee is allocated in equal shares every month to the American people to spend as they see fit. Program administrative costs are paid from the fees collected. The government does not keep any of the money from the carbon fee. We've called this dividend in the past, and we use these two terms, dividend and cashback interchangeably. Border carbon adjustment. This is the third leg of the stool and puts a fee on goods coming from countries without a similar price on carbon. We call that a carbon border adjustment. To protect US manufacturers and jobs, imported goods will pay a border carbon adjustment and goods exported from the United States will receive a refund under this policy. This is about even Steven proper accounting. For example, here's one way of understanding how we communicated about the Ener Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. The policy will reduce America's carbon pollution by 50% by 2030, putting us on track to reach net zero by 2050. With this policy, the government makes fossil fuels more expensive and businesses compete to provide clean energy solutions. The resulting innovation will reduce our pollution fast and efficiently, leading to plenty of reliable and affordable clean energy for our modern lives. This policy will improve health and save 4.5 million American lives over the next 50 years by reducing pollution Americans breathe. Poor air quality is responsible for as many as one in 10 Americans today and sickens thousands more. This policy is affordable for ordinary Americans because it puts money in your pocket. The money collected from the fee is given as a monthly dividend or a carbon cash back payment to every American to spend with no restrictions. Most low and middle income Americans will come out financially ahead or break even. Putting a price on carbon has strong support. 
There are prominent individuals, businesses, educational institutions, faith groups, local governments, news organizations, and nonprofit organizations that have endorsed a price on carbon. We have uh, the, carbon, uh, the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. It's right now in the 117th Congress and have 97 Democratic co-sponsors. This legislation bill number is HR 2307. CCL mission is to build the political will for a livable world. With each piece of legislation with support, we get closer to making that world a reality. In addition to pushing for a carbon fee and dividend, we have engaged in other advocacy for bills, four of which became law in 2020 and 2021. There are three bills found their way into the December 2020 omnibus package that passed with bipartisan support. You can see those three represented on the right of this slide. They cover three important topics for climate change, carbon capture and storage, energy storage, and fishery readiness. A four bill, the SCALE Act, represented on the first column in this slide, became part of the bipartisan infrastructure framework, which was signed into law on November 15, 2021. One thing is for certain. This legislative success might not have been possible without the hard work of our volunteers, who are constantly introducing congressional office to innovative ways of tackling the climate crisis. In addition to the four bills that became law in 2020 and 2021, CCL helped to move three bills forward successfully in either the House or the Senate. The Growing Climate Solutions Act passed the Senate with 92 just votes. The Hope for Home Act and the Reclaim Act both passed the House with bipartisan support. The bill address, these bills address agriculture, energy costs for homeowners, clean energy jobs and technology, and the major work needed to repair the damage caused by coal mining over the centuries. As of January 2021, Canada's provinces have a cashback carbon fee in place. CCL volunteers there have been lobbying in support of a national carbon price since 2010 and succeeded. Seven of the 13 Canadian provinces and terraces, territories are using a federal cashback carbon fee plan. The price in 2020 was $20 Canadian per tonne of CO2 and will increase gradually every year. 90% of the revenue is returned to consumers in the form of carbon fee rebates. And the Canadian press reports that low income households are getting more in rebates than they are paying in higher energy prices. With House passage, Historic climate legislation was signed into law on August 12, 2022. Hooray! The US House passed the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, putting the US on a path to at least 40% emissions reductions by 2030. House passage came less than a week after the legislation passed the US Senate and is now law. Budget reconciliation efforts, we can see that nationwide, all of our volunteers helped to mobilize 200,000 calls, 4.5 million people text and phone banked, 3,400 op-eds and letters to the editor, and extensive news coverage in the New York Times, Washington Post, Bloomberg News, and other major news outlets. Lisa? At our June 22, 2022 conference, Executive Director Madeline Parrott outlined our key policy focus areas. 
building the clean energy economy and nature-based climate solutions. Within those are two main policy objectives, carbon fee and dividend, which remain central to our efforts, as carbon pricing is one of the most effective climate policies and one that we believe will be essential in any complete solution to climate. Forests have the potential to offset emissions and draw down carbon from the atmosphere as well as help us adapt to changing climate, for example, by reducing temperature and the effects of rising heat, especially in urban areas. They also have a great potential for bipartisan support and can help with moving Congress towards greater action. All right, so let's transition to preparing for lobby meetings. We've explored our values and yours. We've talked about the five levers of political will and we're using them across our chapters. But how do we inspire Congress to lead and how do we get people to join us in helping Congress to move its way forward on this? How do we have those conversations? We start by learning how to deeply listen using tools like reflective listening and motivational interviewing. The basic sequence runs something like this. Find the other person's interests, reflect back and confirm what you think they said, identify and confirm their values, find common ground with those values, then ask permission before expressing your thoughts related to those shared values. And even though no two meetings are the same, the basics follow the same general guidelines we'll review here. After today in the real world, prior to the meeting, you'll want to do your research on your member and the district, learn what they're really proud of, what they like and what they've accomplished, learn what really annoys them so you'll know not to bring it up, research local impacts of climate change, learn how carbon fee and dividend will impact their district or state, review previous meeting minutes, determine ahead of time who will be responsible for following up and assign roles for the meeting. And here are the meeting roles. As you can see, there are seven of them. So sometimes having four or five members in a meeting, some people will double up. Most importantly, we have the meeting leader. An analogy that we find useful here is that of a conductor. The CCL team leader is there to manage the meeting, not dominate the meeting. The leader is not necessarily the one who talks the most, but who empowers everyone to share and participate, especially the constituents. During discussion, ask open-ended questions and keep focus on opportunities to affirm shared values. The leader may choose to be in charge of handling the transitions between different parts of a meeting. They help keep the conversation on track and help wrap things up. The leader will help the team settle on an appropriate supporting ask for the meeting and make sure everyone is on the same page for that. I'll review our basic meeting outline. As I said, we meet in teams of four to six CCL members. And we like to think of lobbying as a team sport. We start with appreciation by thanking the member of staff for meeting with us. Our timekeeper asks how much time do we have in the meeting and then keeps track of it and reminds everybody when we're down to a few minutes left. We all introduce ourselves. Uh, if meeting a staffer, we ask them to tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, maybe one person might tell their climate story. Then we show appreciation for something that they've done recently. And it doesn't have to be about the climate or environment necessarily. Explain our purpose, you know, to create the political will for a livable world. Briefly state our request. Support or introduce strong climate legislation that puts America on track to reach our goals of 50% reductions by 2030. Then mention we have more to say on that, but first we'd like to discuss your concerns. Listen and discussion. Here are possible questions you could ask to further the discussion, but be flexible and based on your relationship. 
For instance, rather than react, react to their answer, it's most important to feel them hurt, <clears throat> to help them feel hurt. So you might have some questions ready ahead of time, uh, like what might be preventing the representative from supporting our legislation, uh, or who in our district would need, uh, would we need to convince about the merits of our proposal to win your support? Uh, what is your preferred plan to lower admissions? Finally, deliver our ask. Or if they've indicated they're not ready to introduce or support our policy, then introduce a secondary request as a building block. We also offer additional materials near the end, ask if they would like them hard copy or electronic, and ask how and when we should follow up with them. We might also ask who the congressperson works with on the other side of the aisle. Then thank them for their time. And that's the overview of how we conduct a meeting with the congressional office. So what is next? So if you wanna be part of this movement and meet with your elected officials and work on climate solutions, please get your phone right now and I'm gonna give you a little bit of time and scan this, the, 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 the QR code on your screen. Uh, you can also text the word JOIN to the phone number 619-675-7507. Again, I'm gonna give you just a little time so you join us and be part of our movement and together, we can build the political world for a the political will for a livable world. All right. If you already scan the QR code with your phone or you text the word join to the number 619-675-7507, you are already part of the Citizens Climate Lobby family. You are welcome. Another activity we have, uh, you can join us. Every Wednesday, we have a live informational session at 8 p.m. And we talk about all the work we do within CCL. And by going to this training and this informational session, you can find your best place within our organization. We hope you can join us. And the way to join us, you can sign up at CCLUSA dot org forward slash inter. And to finish, uh, our dear Lisa, our dear state coordinator is gonna finish with this quote. Take it away, Lisa. Here's a quote from Floridian Marjorie Stone and Douglas. Be a nuisance where it counts. Do your part to inform and stimulate the public to join your action. Be depressed, discouraged, and disappointed at failure and the disheartening effects of ignorance, greed, corruption, and bad politics. But never give up. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you found today's training useful, informative, and empowered as you continue your journey with us. We look forward to working together to build the political will for a livable world. Thank you for taking the time to be with here today with us. And in the screen, you have our email address, our website, and we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for caring and being part of the solution.